Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. My name is Jenny and today I'm going to be chalk painting my dining room furniture. As you can see, there's a large stain in the middle and that is where one of my kids accidentally knocked over a bottle of polish remover and it left a stain and kind of an indentation. And then as you can see, I also have some other little cloudiness and stains and scratches and things like that because this set is 15 years old and I have three kids and life happens and you know the table just has seen better days for sure. I've never used chalk paint before and I've never painted furniture before so I'm a complete beginner and so if I can do this you guys can do this. So I hope you guys enjoy this and thank you for watching. And here are the supplies that I used for this project. I have a pack of brushes. They are one and a half inches wide and I actually just got these off of Amazon. And then I have a combo pack of sandpaper, 100, 150, and 220 grit. And so I will be using the larger grit for my table sanding and the finer grit for the distressing. I also have a pack of drop cloths and I also have painters taped to tape off the glass. And then I have some Rust-Oleum tack cloth to get rid of the sawdust. Um, I got a little tray and a foam roller to put on the polycrylic. That is my plan, we'll see how that goes. And I have two cans of the Rust-Oleum chalked paint in the charcoal color. And I have one can of the polycrylic in clear satin. I actually did have to go back out and buy another can of polycrylic, so you will probably need more. And I started by sanding the top of my table. I know with chalk paint, you don't necessarily need to sand, but I went ahead and did it anyway because I actually had a deep groove where the stain was. It had gone through multiple layers of varnish and finish and stain and all the way down to the raw table. So there was a lot of texture there and I just wanted to make sure that I got all of that out. And after I finished sanding, I went over it with the tack cloth and made sure that I got as much sawdust as I could off and then went over it with some water in a spray bottle to make sure my table was extra clean before I started painting. And while I was sweeping, my son Nathan was helping me unload the server so that we could get that ready to paint. And meanwhile, I went and started taking off the hardware from the sideboard, but unfortunately I realized that the hardware does not come off. So that was my first roadblock. Um, some of the hardware is actually fixed onto the sideboard and the server. And so it was impossible to get off and also impossible to paint around because of the detailed scroll work. I wouldn't be able to tape off or paint around that. So I had to decide in that moment just to go ahead and paint over the hardware in the hopes that I would be able to clean it off in the end. So stick around to see if that plan worked out. And this was by far my favorite part of this project, the very first coat on the table, watching that stain just disappear and go away forever. That made me feel so happy. And having never used chalk paint before, I had no idea what to expect, but it was very easy to work with and I felt like the paint glided on pretty easily and the synthetic brushes that I had chosen seemed to work very well and so I was pleased with how it was going. And as I was finishing up, my daughter Noelle started taking all of the seats off of the chairs. And this is what the furniture looked like after one coat of chalk paint. As you can see, you can still see through to the brown wood underneath and you can definitely see brush strokes. So I knew that it was going to need a second coat, but this is what it looked like after one coat. 
I went ahead and put a second coat and this is what a second coat looked like. I also, while I was at it, put a first coat on all of the chairs and on the server. And as you can see here, I am taking out the leaves because they now have two coats and I'm going to focus now on the table when it's pushed together without the leaves because that is how I use the table every single day of the year except for one day. I only put the leaves in one day and so I wanted my brush strokes to be continuous more so for when the table is closed in the smaller position because that is how I'm going to use it 364 days of the year. So I wanted the brush strokes to line up for that more so than just the one day that I put the leaves in. So I took the leaves out to put that third coat of paint. So this is a third coat on the dining table. And the only places that I put a third coat was the top of the dining table and the top of the sideboard. The rest of the furniture only has two coats. And this is what the table looked like after three coats of paint. And this is where I decided to leave it. You can still see brush strokes and there's definitely a pattern but I liked it. I thought it kind of looked like weathered wood and so I decided that I would keep it. I initially thought that I would be painting these to where they were completely opaque and I couldn't really see brush strokes because I'm not really one for distressed furniture or kind of more shabby chic that's not typically my style. So at first I kind of intended to paint the furniture until I could see nothing, no brush strokes if possible. And I changed my mind on that and I decided to just paint it until I thought it looked pretty and whatever that was, it was. And I actually surprised myself because even though I could still see some of the brown showing through and some of the brush strokes in the furniture, it actually looked really pretty to me. And so I decided to stop after two coats and I was really happy with the way that that looked. I liked the weathered wood look. I liked how it looked a little bit aged and a little bit distressed and it's a personal thing. So stop whenever you feel like you like your furniture like i would just recommend painting one coat at a time and then just stop when you think it looks pretty and for some that'll be less coats of paint and for others it'll be more coats of paint but it's a personal decision and i think that however you do it you can just decide with each coat how it is looking and if you like it And this is how the sides of the furniture looked after two coats and this is how I decided to leave it. And here I'm just touching up some spills with a baby wipe and that's what I happen to have on hand and it worked really well. I'm sure a paper towel with some water on it would also work well. And I used 220 grit sandpaper to lightly distress the edges of the furniture and I tried to do it kind of where I thought it would naturally distress 
sort of the high points of the furniture in the corners and that's another thing that's kind of a personal taste thing um, whether or not you distress and how much you decide to distress and whenever I accidentally over distressed I just went over it with a little bit more of chalk paint And now it was time to put on the first coat of polycrylic and again I've never used any of these things before I had never used polycrylic I didn't know what to expect I really thought that it would glide on very smoothly and that I pictured just kind of one smooth brush stroke because I think I was picturing it oily like a polyurethane and maybe it would just glide on but in my experience it did not glide on I'm not sure if it was just the method I was doing or the supplies I was using but it didn't glide on it kind of skipped and stuck a little bit it felt very sticky so I experimented and played all around a little bit with some different ways to get it on there but in the end I decided to just hurry up get it on as quick as I could and then smooth it out with the brush after because it really wasn't going on as smoothly as I had hoped. And this is after one coat of polycrylic and it doesn't look even at all and I knew I would not be able to sand even though you sand between polycrylic coats it wasn't a solid enough coat to do any sanding because I was afraid that it would sand off some of the chalk paint so instead of sanding I went ahead and put another coat of polycrylic before I sanded and this time I tried applying it with the foam roller which was what I was going to do initially but then changed my mind and decided to do the brush so now I am back to the roller and it's not doing any better of a job so again I'm just going to get it on there as quickly as I can and then I will smooth it out with the brush And after I went over all the furniture with the polycrylic, I decided to start sanding because now I had two coats of polycrylic on the top of my table and I started sanding with the 220 grit sandpaper to get a smooth finish before I put the final coat of polycrylic. I also did this to the top of the sideboard. And this is what the table looked like after the third coat of polycrylic and that is where I decided to leave it so I went ahead and put a third coat on the top of the sideboard as well and now I consider my dining room complete and I really like the way it turned out you can definitely see some pattern in the wood from the painting and I thought that looked nice so I decided to go with it and I'm finished. I have two coats of chalk paint on all of the furniture. I have a third on the top of the dining table and the top of the sideboard. And there's a little bit of distressing and that's kind of a look that I ended up wanting to go for. So I really think this is a doable project. Um, if you're a beginner like me and you've never done anything like this before, I wouldn't worry about it. The only thing is it does take a little bit of time. I had only budgeted about three days for this project and with all the pieces of furniture that I had and all of the chairs, it was a five day project. So just make sure you give yourself plenty of time and I really think you can do this. I would encourage you to try to do this at home because I kind of feel like I have a new dining room now. So it was really nice project to complete and I'm really glad that I did it. And I make plenty of other videos on my channel like organization, DIYs, cleaning motivation, and everything family, home, and lifestyle. So if that's something that you're into, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate you guys watching today. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you on the next one. You guys have a great day.